Hey, good morning and welcome Goma family and all the people that are watching via Facebook and all the people that are listening via the Love Forward podcast. I want to tell you good morning. Um, one of the things that really troubles me is how we major in the minors. What do I mean? And this is uh, actually, that's sort of a church cliche, which I hate church cliches, but we focus on things that are not important while we ignore things that truly are important. And for those of you who are hearing this for the first time or watching this for the first time, um, what I've done in the last few weeks is I've kind of changed gears as to how I'm preaching or teaching the gospel because, or at least on Sundays, because the most important thing that I think any of us can do is to get a practical understanding of this. In other words, if we don't have a practical application of the thing, we can't apply the thing in our day-to-day -day lives. And if we can't apply it in our day-to-day -day lives, then what we have is just something that's, you know, it's conceptually wonderful, but it's practically worthless. <laughs> so, I, what I'm doing is, is I'm taking this from the standpoint of a craftsman who understands a trade and is teaching apprentices how to do what it is that I do. Not saying that I'm high and mighty or anything like that, that I have it all together. No, but what I'm saying is that I know some things. And so what I want to do is I want to show people how to take these tools and show them how to use them and then put them in the toolbox. Because once you, have the, once you have the understanding of the tool and you put it in your toolbox, now not only can you take the tool and use it for a practical purpose, but you can also show others how to use the tool. Does that make sense? I hope it does. But anyway, let's, uh, let's get going. And, and, and again, majoring in the minors. This is a really serious thing that the body of Christ faces because Again, we get mired in things that are not important while we ignore things that truly are. And Jesus said it best in Matthew chapter 23. So I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot from Matthew 23 today. But Matthew 23 and 24, Jesus said, You blind guides, straining out a net and swallowing a camel. Holy smokes. In other words, you, you're... Focusing in on something really small, something minor, but you're digesting something that is really major. What am I saying? Right now, we are experiencing a time where people are being segmented in, in, in ways that are really unkind and unloving, that there are people that refer to human beings as vermin or animals and, and, and that people who are in the leadership in the body of Christ are silent about that. Now, I'm not getting into anything, you know, political or anything like that, but I'm just saying that, that when, the, when we talk about the body of Christ, we're looking at every human being as created in the image and the likeness of God. And so when you refer to a human being as an animal or vermin or cockroach or something like that, that what you're doing is you're denigrating humanity. And when you do that, you spit in the face of God. I mean, if you really, you know, people say, oh, well, if you, if you cuss, smoke, or chew, listen, I'm going to tell you something. A cuss word doesn't bother God, but when you refer to one of his creations as an animal, I suppose that he would be at least a little disappointed. Now, I'm not being judgmental. It's not the point. But what, what I'm saying is, is that we focus in on, on, we swallow things like that, and we ignore things like love. Someone like me who preaches love as a foundation, who preaches love as a springboard, who preaches love as basically the entire the entirety of the water in the pool, so to speak, someone like me is, is beaten down in theological circles because they say, oh, well, you're just preaching too much love. 
but they will tolerate people being called animals. Do you follow what I'm saying? This is the problem that we have. And listen, if any place that should, anywhere that should be getting this right as far as how humanity should be regarded, how humanity should be treated, it should be those who are adherents of, disciples of, sons of the living God. Okay? I mean, th this is just, I mean, discipleship 101, sonship 101. This is the basics. This is the fundamentals. I mean, because listen, if we don't get love right, everything else fails. Everything, I mean, every single thing. There is nothing in scripture that will hold weight if you extract love from the equation. I mean, nothing. I am uh, nothing. Nothing. There is nothing. Matter if you take love out of scripture, all it is is just some other religious BS. That's right. I said that. If, if, if because we're talking, we're start, starting from the foundation that God is love, and if God is love, then that means that we too, because we are His image and His likeness, that we too must be love. Real simple. So, that being said. Jesus, in Matthew 23, he speaks woes to the Pharisees. He, he really digs in, and it seems like he's digging in at these guys, at the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but he's not. He's digging in at their belief system. He's digging in at their mindset. He's not digging. Jesus never took a dig at anybody individually or even anybody as a group. What Jesus did do is he really dealt harshly with mindsets that were contrary to the Father's will, which the Father's will is love. So watch this. Matthew 23, 13, uh, this is 13 through 15. It says, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven in people's faces, for you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would enter to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you travel across sea and land to make a single proselyte, and when he becomes a proselyte, you make him twice as much a child of hell as yourself. Now, a couple of things here. Uh, in Judaism, they didn't proselytize, okay? If you were a Jew, you were a Jew because you were a Jew by birth, okay? So they were not talking about converting people to Judaism, converting people from pagan religions to Judaism. No, you, be, you were a Hebrew by birth. You were a Jew by birth. What they're talking about is these different sects, the sects of the Pharisees, the sects of the Sadducees, the sects of the Essenes. These are the, the converts. People were converting people into their sects, but not into the overall religion. It's really important that you understand that because somebody had hit me once when they said, well, it says right here that they were trying to convert people that, well, no, not exactly. Not like how, you know, evangelistic Christianity treats things where you're, you're going out and you're converting people to Christianity. No, not the same thing. And, and, and watch this. Then this is also used to justify the doctrine of hell, you know, because it says you make him twice as much a child of hell as yourself. But you have to understand what, D what Jesus is saying here. The word hell is Gehenna. Gehenna is the trash dump or the trash heap that was burning for 500 years outside of Jerusalem. So what, what Jesus is saying that you make someone as twice as much a hell, or twice, twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. What Jesus is saying essentially is that you're making people dirt bags just like you. Do you catch that? And, and uh, because what goes into what goes into the trash dump? Trash bags. What's in trash? What's in trash bags? Trash. All right. So what's another euphemism for trash? Dirt. You know because trash is dirty, trashy, dirty. Get it? So you you're making uh, the the converts to um, to Phariseeism or Sadduceeism, making them big bigger dirt bags than they are. That's what it means. So here's the other thing too. Um, people are being turned off by the thousands to the kingdom of God. And, and this is what, what Jesus was saying. He said that, that you shut up the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. This is what's happening. There was a video that, that was making the rounds in, in social media this week about a so-called apostle that, uh, that called up. Uh, he, he asked uh, women in the audience if he wanted 
or if they wanted him to basically judge them to, to, to uh, uh, assess why they are still single. And this woman got up, you know, and I'm sure she had no idea what was coming, but this man talked about her weight, talked about her breasts, talked about what kind of bra she should buy. I mean, a whole bunch of stuff. And, and, and hear me, y'all, this is not an uncommon mindset. Because what happens is, is that people come to church, they, they come looking for some peace, some respite from the judgment that they receive at work, at school, at home, in their communities. They're looking for something to give them a break from all of this. But you go to church and church is more judgmental, more gossipy, more catty, more uh, dirtbaggish. Than, than the world. And, and people wonder why, you know, why aren't people coming to church? Well, they ain't coming to church because they don't want to hear the truth. And, and, and this is, watch this. They will go to Ephesians 4, 15 and they'll say, well, you know, speaking the truth in love may grow up into him and in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And they say, well, see, the thing is you've got to speak truth in love. Let me help you out with that. Because when you talk about speaking truth in love, if you read this this passage of scripture in context, it's talking about speaking in love. And I'm going to tell you something. When you when you when you tell a woman that you you're not getting a man because your breasts are hanging out or, or whatever, or that you're you know that you're wearing clothes that are too listen, that is not speaking the truth in love. What that is is bashing this person and then trying to hide behind scripture. And again, going back to Matthew chapter 23, you want to talk about some of the dirt baggy? That's dirt baggish. Man, that's dirt baggery of the highest order of magnitude. You, you follow what I'm saying? Now, let me say this, because people will say, well, preacher, you, you, you say uh, people are not coming to church because of the hypocrites in the church, but you got hypocrites in the at work, and you got hypocrites in the community, you got hypocrites in the club, and well, well watch this. You understand that there are hypocrites at work, that there are hypocrites in the club, that there are hypocrites in the community. You understand that, right? But And, and, and I'm not saying that you, you suddenly go to church and you get divorced from humanity. That's not what I'm saying. The, 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 the thing that I'm saying is, is that you go to church looking for a break from that. I'm not saying that people are just going to be perfect or uh, they're going to be all suchy much. But what I'm saying is that at least we should make an effort to subdue that kind of nonsense because people are coming looking for a respite from the, the beatdown that they get in the world. So watch this. The People talk about hypocrites. Well, in... in Hypocrites in, in at work, yeah, you're gonna get hypocrites. You're gonna get people that that uh, that that say one thing and mean something else. But guess what? You have to go to work because you have to earn a living. Okay, you you go you go to the club because you want to get entertained and you want to uh, uh, you know free yourself from the uh, the confines of of all of the nonsense that you had to deal with during the week. You know the whole living for the weekend thing. You you these are things that you. You know, basically, in, in the case of work, you're going there because you have to and you're going to the club because you want to. But when you go to church, you're looking for Christ. At least that's what you should be. And, and, and when we talk about looking for Christ, we're talking about looking for love. We're looking for love and it was supposed to be looking for love in the right places. But what happens is instead of finding love, we find more judgment. We find more hypocrisy. We find more criticism. We find more gossip. And that is part of how we're majoring in the minors. So watch this. Sometimes you'll look at someone and you'll say, God, if they would just cut their hair, oh, if they would just wear less makeup, if they would just wear better fitting clothes or whatever it is, right? Listen, take a step back and with empathy and compassion, look at this person and, and, and just kind of love them. Where, I mean, not kind of, but love them where they are. Stop judging. It, it, listen, you know, people say, well, if you love somebody, you'll correct them. No, that's not true. Listen, you as a, and, and again, people are talking about, well, you correct your kids. Yeah, you're damn right. You can, you correct your kids. But guess what? 
Your kids are your kids. Your kids are your responsibility. Your kids, you have a responsibility to train them up in the way that they should go. And I'm not talking about it, training them up in the way that you think they should go. You train them up in the way that they should go. So you give them a foundation that they can build their, uh, build their lives on so they can learn what their identity and their purpose is so they can do what they need to do, not what you think that they should do. But anyway, I, I digress. The, the point is that when you correct your children, you're, you're helping to shape them into the, your will, your culture, and your intent, which hopefully lines up with God's, okay? But you don't have the right, the responsibility, the duty, or anything else to correct any other adult. You need to sit down and pump your brakes. Honestly, listen, what we need to do is we need to stop looking at people in a judgmental way. Grown folks are grown, and, and, and I'm going to tell you something. If you point them to Jesus, if you point them to love, if you uh, treat them with grace, guess what? Love and grace will begin to work on people, and if there is anything that needs to be changed, guess what? God will work that out. He, God is God. He don't need your help. He don't need you to help correct anybody. He don't need you to help point out the flaws in somebody. He doesn't need you to point out people's idiosyncrasies or, or, or their what, whatever it is. You don't need to do that. All you need to do is just shut up and love them. Honestly, I mean, listen, I've said this before, that if you can't say something positive, don't say anything. If, if love and grace is not your default mode, let your operating mode be silence. Don't talk down to people. And I'm not talking down to anybody. I'm, I, I, I promise you, I love you, and I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help. And I'm not calling anybody out or anything like that. Listen, if you see yourself doing this, just take a step back. Listen, you're, you're learning how to turn the wrench. That's it. That's it. And, and I promise you that what will happen is, is that if you were the person who was always calling someone out for doing something wrong and you stop, I promise you that people will notice that. And, and if you go from that mode, the mode of correction and judgment and, and, you know, I got to point out sin, I got to call out sin wherever I see it. If you go from that mode to going to the mode of loving, guess what? People will sit up and take notice. And all of a sudden, you know, you will show that God is good. People will be able to taste and see that God is good by the love that you demonstrate. Now, Ephesians 4 and 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearing, unto the hearers. Do you follow that? That if you're not speaking something edifying, that you shouldn't say it. And people will, will, <laughs> will go to this, you know, I, I have to share this with you that, that uh, that Kyle Butler, Aaron Abke, and myself, we did a podcast that was just absolutely amazing. It was the difference between cursing, cussing, and swearing because they're not all the same things, but people use those words interchangeably and they're they're not interchangeable terms. They, they each have a discrete and precise meaning. And only two of the three are biblically prohibited. But when they talk about cussing, they go to this, Ephesians 4 and 29, let no corrupt communicate. Who, listen, God determines what is corrupt communication, period, full stop. And here's what corrupt communication is. Again, if you look at Ephesians 4 and 29 in context with, say, maybe 20 scriptures before it, 20 or 20 verses before it or 20 verses afterward, it's talking about love. In other words, if you're saying anything other than love, just stop saying it. Don't say if it's If it's not of love, just simply don't say it. That's real simple because the, the only thing that is good – to the use of edifying is love, and the only thing that ministers grace to anyone is love. You can't, you can't minister correction and grace at the same time. You can't. And, and, and people say, well, you know, you, you, you have to correct because Paul told Timothy that, you know, that we have to correct. Well, let me tell you something. The correction for the child of God, the discipline for the child of God, is is the is the spirit of God and and the and the word of God and basically when I say the word of God I'm not 
specifically saying scripture, but I'm talking about the spoken word of God that speaks to your life. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit's job. He came into the world to convict and to correct, period, full stop. So it, it's God's spirit. And, and here's the thing. You'll find guidelines for this within a scripture, but you have to parse scripture precisely. This is called rightly dividing. And, and if you're not looking through the lens of Jesus, if you're not looking through the lens of love, if you're not looking through the lens of grace, then guess what? You're going to miss it. If you're not looking through the lens of liberty, you're going to miss it. You will misinterpret what is being said. And you, and, and if you are, if, if you're trying to preach, teach, uh, or disciple anyone, guess what? You're, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. So with that being said, I just want to, I want to close out by saying that, you know, we need to stop majoring in the minors. Stop focusing in on, on people's dress. Stop focusing on people's behavior. Stop focusing on people's speech. Stop focusing on what you perceive someone's, you know, sexuality should be, should or shouldn't be. Stop focusing on those things and focus on the major thing. The thing, the, the, the absolute thing in scripture is love. If we miss love, t listen, I, honestly, if we miss love, we had to stop teaching, stop preaching, stop everything. Because listen, if you take love out of this, it is worthless. It is worthless. Paul said that if I have all of these gifts, if I have all of these abilities and I have not love, I am nothing. That's what he said. Listen, if we don't have love... When people encounter those who are Christ conscious, they should encounter love. And if they're not encountering love, if, if you don't think that someone is going to encounter love through you, and I'm telling you, listen, take correction out of it. Take your opinion out of it. Take your ide ideas and ideologies. Take even your theology out of it and just look at it through the lens of love. That is empathy and compassion. See it through their eyes. Walk in their footsteps and care deeply about what they're going through. Because if that's not what we're doing, fold the tent and go home. That's it. That's what I have for you. I pray that it blesses you. And if, if this blesses you, please share it with someone else because I believe that if you catch this, this will bless you. This will help set you, not set you free. It'll help you realize that you're made free. I, I'm going to tell you something. This, this is where, you know, theology gets you because, you know, you or, or religion, it gets down in you and you begin to repeat things even though you, you now know better because we're not set free. We're made free. It's a big difference because set is conditional, but made is positional. And, and we are in Christ. And because we're in Christ, we are made free because Jesus was made free. Got it? Good. And, and so, again, if you, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up at www.derekday.com or on facebook.com forward slash Derek Day Ministries. Or you can uh, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. My handle is Derek E. Day. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-E-D-A-Y. Um, and also you could uh, check out the, um, uh, the 700, almost 700 videos that are out on YouTube that will help you walk in the liberty, the unfettered liberty of God's unconditional love and unlimited grace. You'll find those on YouTube. The channel is Derek Day and the Love Forward podcast on Apple iTunes and Google Play. Don't want to miss it. It's going to be some good stuff coming up. And, and I am absolutely excited about what we're doing. So I just want to share that with you. And remember, as always, that God loves you. So do I. You're loved and valued. Stay blessed.